do you fix a PC that stutters in games? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the It's Not Rocket Science series, we've been helping you solve PC problems with expert troubleshooting tips on how to keep your system running like a pro. It's not rocket science, and as you will see throughout this series, it really is Lego. In this video, our focus will be on how to fix a PC that stutters in games. I'm sure that many of you have experienced gaming with terrible 1% lows caused by constant stuttering on micro stutters that make you feel nauseous. I recently experienced this exact problem while testing my ultimate gaming PC, so I put together this video to help you troubleshoot the issue and rapidly get back to playing your games the way they were meant to be played. Based on the benchmarks, it would be reasonable to believe that the system performed as expected, crushing the 14900K base test bench across the entire suite of tests. The problem is these results mask a large issue that I had during testing and why it's so incredibly important to test your system before making claims about its performance. The issue I had was somewhat strange. When I first tested this system in games, the 1% lows were significantly lower than the baseline 14900K system, even though the average FPS was higher. For example, in Cyberpunk 2077, at a resolution of 1080p, the 1% lows for the test bench were approximately 40% higher than for the gaming PC. Typically, a result like this would point to an issue with your memory. So I ran Kahoo, I disabled XMP, and I even changed memory modules. Unfortunately, nothing memory related seemed to impact the results. For such an expensive high-end system, it was incredibly disappointing to see results like these, and I knew I couldn't release a video until I figured out what the issue was. So I started troubleshooting. This took me down many rabbit holes, and I spent countless hours reading Reddit posts and trying different fixes in an attempt to figure out what the real issue was. Given how common these type of issues are when you build a PC, I thought it'd be valuable to walk you through my troubleshooting journey. My guess is that many of you may even have a similar issue without even realizing it. But don't worry, I will help you fix your system and avoid wasting considerable time chasing the wrong rabbit. The first thing I focused in on was hardware, thinking that my luck had finally run out and that this was a hardware related issue. So I immediately zeroed in on the GPU riser cable that I used. There are so many horror stories online from users that have had issues with riser cables that I thought this would be a good place to start. So I removed it, but unfortunately that didn't solve the issue. I then systematically changed out every main component in the system from the CPU to the SSDs, the PSU, and even the motherboard, which was extremely difficult to find given that they are no longer being produced by ASUS all to no avail. I then dug deeper and replaced the USB expansion hub. I tested the cables with my Dr. Power 3 tester and I even tried a different keyboard and mouse, but still no change. At this point, I had basically rebuilt the entire PC and I was getting the same lackluster performance that I did originally. I thought maybe it's just the game, so I tested other games, but the same behavior persisted. Excellent average FPS, but terrible 1% lows. With the hardware side of the build exhausted, I moved on to the software side. I started by reinstalling Windows. I reflashed the BIOS. I ran DDU and I reinstalled my GPU drivers. I thoroughly reviewed and disabled background services. I disabled my GPU overclock. I reinstalled the motherboard chipset drivers. And I even retested my memory stability with Kahoo, all to no avail. I went down Reddit rabbit hole after Reddit rabbit hole, trying things like disabling the high precision event timer, C states, hyper threading, E cores, you name it, I tried it. But nothing I did seemed to work. I thought it might be the frame capture software, CapFrameX, that I was using, but that didn't change things. I wasn't making progress and I was getting very frustrated. So I created a list and I systematically went through every component and corresponding piece of software in my system. I finally got to the fans and I found a Reddit post that talked about the performance impact of using Lian Li TL LCD fans. Finally, a breakthrough. For some reason, the TL LCD fans impact your performance when the screens show an image or a sensor reader. So I turned them off and I reran Cinebench. As you can see, there was a relatively small performance impact of around 3%. The problem is this helped with applications like Cinebench, but didn't fix the 1% lows in games. I was getting to the end of my list when I decided to start investigating ASUS Armory Crate, software that I was also using with my Intel test bench. I was running out of ideas, so I randomly went into AuraSync and changed the color selection from color cycle to I ran my benchmark, this time for Middle Earth Shadow of War, and BAM! The 1% lows increased by around 50%. Finally, after weeks of testing, I had a real breakthrough. I was somewhat relieved, but it really didn't make much sense to me. Why would a color selection in AuraSync impact my performance by so much? So I repeated the change a few times, and each time it came back with the same result. Not sure exactly why, but the color cycle color sync option was really killing my FPS in games. I thought I had finally discovered the root cause, so I started benchmark 
testing again, but this time with a static color selected. In the first game that I retested after making this change, Total War Warhammer 3, I still got terrible 1% load performance relative to my test bench. The game I had been testing, Middle Earth Shadow of War, was running much better, but unfortunately problems persisted in some other titles. Given the success I had earlier, I decided to go back into Armory Crate to see if there was anything else I could do. That's when I discovered an app listed under device called Game First. I turned it on, reran Warhammer 3, and bam, the stutters were gone and all of the lost performance was instantly recovered. I really wanted to understand what this app was doing to my PC, so I went into the Game First settings and I switched every option on and off, reran the benchmarks, and compared the results. It turns out the primary option that was driving the performance boost was switching the Windows Power Plan from Balanced to Game Turbo. So I disabled Game First and I tried changing the Power Plan manually in Control Panel. Interestingly, enabling Game First still gave better results. When it runs, it lists two other optimizations. The first is called Optimized Network and the second is called Speed Up Application. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but apparently they help. What I also found interesting is that on AMD systems, the Game First app doesn't appear in Armory Crate and the Game Turbo High Performance Power Plan that it enables doesn't exist in Windows. So this must be a Windows optimization for Intel-based systems only. So after what became a very long troubleshooting battle that included replacing every main component in my build, it all came down to Asus Armory Crate. Perhaps I really shouldn't be surprised. What's interesting to me is that I wasn't able to find these issues and or fixes mentioned anywhere online. And I think that's because most people don't really track their 1% lows. There were lots of posts trashing Armory Crate and Game First, but no mention of Aura Sync lighting options impacting your performance in any significant way or any discussion on the performance benefit of using Game First. I know this was a lot to cover, but hopefully it helps you in your future builds. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the It's Not Rocket Science How To series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also consider joining our new membership program, which I'm super excited about. Bye for now.